Okay, so my daughter had been wanting a skim board for years, and I finally found one at the thrift store for about four bucks, and it was ugly. There was It wasn't pretty at all, so we decided to go ahead and decorate it with some epoxy. So I had some leftover total boat epoxy from my kitchen countertops. This is countertop epoxy, which will be fine for this project because we're going to put it on very thin. Uh, I grabbed some spray paint for tinting the epoxy, of course my buckets for mixing the epoxy, if you're thinking about doing a project like this, definitely get plenty of little mixing buckets because they're kind of just single use. So that's the part A, and my daughter has the part B, and we're going to measure it out in order to mix it together. So the measurements on epoxy is very important. You want your part A and your part B to be exactly the same. So you definitely want to get level with it. So she is about to dump the epoxy into the mixing bucket so we can mix it together. It's kind of important that you do it this way where you have the two separate for part A and part B and then dump them into a separate bucket because you want to make sure that they're exactly the same amount. So definitely do it that way. And I'm just taking the extra lint off of my paint roller there so that we don't end up with lint in our epoxy and that's super important but you can spread your epoxy with a lot of different things and you'll see in this video that's exactly what we do because I only had one of these paint rollers so the next layer our second layer on the top of this I think we use a paintbrush and then when we get to the other side I think we even use like a credit card I don't even remember but you can spread your epoxy kind of with just about anything a roller or a brush this is the easiest so you have to mix your epoxy for at least three full minutes to make sure that it is fully mixed because it has to be fully mixed and epoxy kind of tends to kind of want to be like oil and water and separate from each other. So you have to really, really give it a good mix. Um, then dump it out onto your project and mix it up again on the board. So that's what I told her to do is go ahead and mix it up like this, like spread it around, you know, within itself in a pile there so that in case there was any pieces or parts that didn't get mixed in the bowls, you can now mix it in the, on the, on the project. So now she's going to just spread that out without spreading it right to the edges, spread it out until you get close to the edge and wait until it's set up a little bit better to, to let it flow over the edge because otherwise you're going to lose a lot of your epoxy to the floor if you just go ahead and spread it right out to the edges. It'll just run right off the edge of your board or your countertop, whatever it is you're working on. Now I'm tinting the little bit of leftover epoxy that I had in the bottom of that bucket. I didn't pour every bit of it out. I left just a little bit there and I'm tinting it with some white spray paint um, so that it's opaque and I'm going to use that tinted epoxy to go ahead and create my wave patterns on the surfboard or the skim board. Okay, so now I'm starting the pouring of the tinted, the white tinted epoxy onto the board. And this part is completely subjective and personal preference. You can do whatever kind of design you want to do on this part. I did forget to tell you that I did put some glitter, some really, really fine glitter into the first the first layer of epoxy. So you can kind of see that in the video if you're if you really look close that there is a, a really, really fine glitter. It's almost like a powder glitter. It's made for, I think, embossing. And that worked out really nice because you can just barely see it, but it really, really glistens in the light. So anyway, this is this is the way I did the white wave patterns is I just kind of poured the white out onto the skim board in random lines. And now we're taking the heat gun and just spreading it out and manipulating that epoxy so that it looks more natural like waves. It looks kind of like an Easter egg right now, but it eventually looks just like the beach and the sunset beyond the ocean. So this part is, you know, just us manipulating those waves and making it look like water. So what's happening here is the heat gun is heating the epoxy, which makes it thinner and more 
flowing. It flows a lot easier. So then the heat gun kind of moves the epoxy around because it's real, real thin and warm. And you can get the design the way that you want it. So this part is, you know, you can just play around with this. That's why it's not a bad idea to do some sample things first to see how you like the look of it. Then we took a little bit of rubbing alcohol and we sprayed that on there. And what that does is creates separations in the epoxy and it almost looks like air bubbles um, in the tinted epoxy. So the white tinted epoxy kind of separates and creates these air bubble looking shapes, which is pretty cool. Um, so we only did that in the area down separating the water and the sand part so that it would look like ocean waves separating on the beach there. Okay, so now we're on to the second coat of epoxy, and you have to do that according to the manufacturer's instructions. And with Total Boat, I think it's you have to apply the second coat after four hours, but not more than six hours. If you wait more than six hours, then you have to sand your first coat of epoxy, and then you can apply the second coat. But we didn't want to have to go through the process of sanding, so we did it in their allotted time. We put the second coat on, so it was nighttime, and the lighting's not good. But the second coat of epoxy, you just mix it up just like the first coat, clear and pour it on top, spread it around, and hit it with the heat gun to take out any bubbles. So then the next step is to do the bottom side of the board. So you see what color this board was originally. It was just kind of a bland color. Anyway, so the second, the back side, she wanted to do pink with a ton of glitter. So we bought some hot pink spray paint. We mixed up the epoxy just like we mixed it up the day before, one to one ratio. And then we used that hot pink spray paint to tint it. Okay, one more quick thing that you have to do before pouring on the back side is to tape off the edges of the front side. So you see that blue around the edges? That's blue painter's tape and you have to do that because inevitably the epoxy will drip and it will leave drip marks or it'll leave hanging drips on the bottom of the board no matter what. Um, you can run your finger on it around it but inevitably there'll be a few drips and you don't want those to be hanging off your beautiful epoxy from the first side um, because you would have to sand it and then it would make the front of your board a mess again. So you want to tape that off so that those drips can then just be taken off with the tape and the front of your board is left perfect. Okay, so there's the pink spray paint that we're using to tint this and I'm mixing it and she's adding the spray paint and we gave it a good long, probably six good long squirts of spray paint into that in order to tint it and we wanted it to be pretty opaque and very hot pink. After we tinted it and mixed it, we started adding in the glitter and she put in a little bit at a time and then accidentally dumped a whole boatload of it. So it was pretty, pretty thick with glitter. You'll see here, it, she accidentally just dumps like half the bag in there at the end. So then we mixed the glitter in and it was really, really thick because there was so much glitter in there. Um, so we should have probably mixed up a bigger batch of this or maybe just put less glitter in it so because it it was pretty thin on there it was a little bit hard to spread because we didn't have we could have used a little more epoxy on this back side but it worked out fine because this is the first coat and obviously you see we're spreading it with some sort of little uh, plastic piece of plastic that I just cut in order to be able to spread it because we didn't have anything else so anyhow um, we get it all spread all the way to the edges and I used the heat gun to thin it out so that we could completely hit all the edges with the epoxy. It was not, we could have used more epoxy. Anyway, once we got it all spread to the edges, then we poured some more glitter into a bucket and basically just dripped it or spread it on top of the epoxy so that it would have a real opaque glitter look because as you can see the pink paint really faded it, it was diluted by all the glitter so which was fine we were happy with the color but um, we just added some more glitter to the top so it would be fully fully glittered 
And here we are just taking some of the drips off of the bottom side off the tape so we don't get really thick long drips. And you can see how glittery it is once that ring light turned off. It's really, really glittery. It's really, really pretty. That's just the way my daughter wanted it, full of glitter. So then the next step is to let that dry for four hours and then put on a second coat on the bottom. But before we do that, she wants to put some, um, she's going to print out some lettering on her, on our Cricut and apply that to the back of the board. She's got a scripture picked out that she loves, and so she's going to put that on there first. Okay, so now she's got her scripture attached. It's the vinyl Cricut uh, lettering, and she printed that out and attached it to the board, and now we're mixing up our second coat of epoxy for the bottom of the board, just the same way you mix up all the other coats. Um, and then spreading it out. And as you can see, we're just spreading it out with whatever we could find. I'm using a paint stick and she's got a piece of plastic equivalent to a credit card. So epoxy's pretty forgiving. You put that heat gun on there and it levels it. It's really self-leveling, so it doesn't matter so much how you spread it out. It's easier with a brush or a roller, but you could do just about anything. It's pretty forgiving. So now we just got to let that set up for 24 hours and really um, it's fully, fully cured after I think like a month. So that's the epoxy skim board project. So if you are thinking about doing epoxy and you'd like to see all my other epoxy projects, I've done a lot of epoxy. I'll link you up to my playlist. Just click the link right here.